So I first met Maestro Palo Pugling a little over two years ago when my daughter and I traveled to Manila to train with him in the DeCampo 123 original system. Um, after having seen uh, some information about the system online and joining the online course, um, we had the opportunity at that time to travel so uh, and we'd never been to the Philippines so we thought it was a great opportunity and I have to say it was an experience that has really transformed my FMA um, in all sorts of ways. So in this little video I wanted to uh, just talk about some of the things that I've learned about the DeCampo system. Now these are I have to say are my interpretations um, that have come through the practice of the system over the last two years um, and I particularly want to emphasize uh, one idea um, that is prevalent in lots of the aspects of DeCampo. Um, and that idea is really about the speed of recovery in the strikes um, that happens in the DeCampo system so that in fact you can return a strike much faster um, than you might be able to with other methods. And I want to emphasize that um, in terms of the thread that I'm going to follow through various uh, ideas that come out of the system. So the first idea that I want to um, engage with is a thing uh, you notice in DeCampo almost immediately, and it's a thing called pick-pick. Um, it's the slapping movement that you hear as a person taps their arm as they're closing their strikes. Um, and I know that some people, when they see this online, think that we're doing some kind of martial arts um, beat beatboxing where we're uh, kind of making noises as if we're in a, a kung fu movie um, which is actually not really what's happening at all um, and uh, pick pick actually has an important function in terms of the uh, in my experience and again this is an interpretation it's not something that um, has been expressed to me in this way specifically um, but I have the kind of experience that it returns my strikes much faster Before I get to uh, Pick Pick itself, I just wanted to mention that um, the Grandmaster is famous for having uh, enjoyed watching gunfighting movies. And in his, uh, the dueling aspect of DeCampo, um, which is kind of a central uh, feature of the system, uh, he used it for Wego total matches, matches where people fought with um, live sticks without any uh, protective equipment, at town festivals, at fiestas, um, and was uh, undefeated in those matches. And his key principle was this idea of being like a gunfighter, that you could, um, you would be the person who strikes first and the person who strikes last. And what he meant by that was that even if, uh, or if my opponent didn't move, um, there's a story that he, he would count to, to three, and if you hadn't moved, he would immediately initiate a strike on you. Um, on the other hand, if you do move, um, his idea was to move rapidly into a counter so that even though you move first, he would strike first. And of course, the idea is that he also strikes last, that he finishes the fight. Um, so this is one of his ideas, and it comes out of this kind of gunfighting kind of mentality, you know, fast draw kind of idea. The other uh, thing he's famous for saying is that uh, he, he was obviously watching um, someone strike, I assume, because of the, the grammar of the sentence. Um, but he says something along the lines of, yes, that's how you strike, like killing a snake that wants to bite you. So this is kind of idea of a whip. Um, if you've ever had to uh, kill a snake, um, you'll know, uh, which of course we have plenty down here in Australia, um, even though we're not supposed to kill them. Um, you, uh, you have to use a kind of whipping action or it's, it's uh, common, in fact, for people to have a long a staff near their house, um, if they're in the country, with a chain on the end, a heavy chain, and they use that to break the back of the snake. Um, and so there is this kind of whipping idea, right, which I think um, is kind of central to the DeCampo system as well. Uh, one of the key things that I've felt in uh, DeCampo is this kind of speed of recovery. And there's a number of methods that help us do that. So one of the mechanisms that helps uh, DeCampo have a speed of uh, striking, which I think is the signature of the system, is a thing we call pick pick or slapping. Um, you'll notice you'll notice it immediately as I start to move because you'll hear the sound of the slap. So what's happening is any time the strike is coming from abierta to serrata, whether it's a horizontal strike, whether it's an upward strike whether it's a downward strike, um, you'll hear this slapping noise. This is one of those things where people think we're doing this to kind of make our strike sound powerful or something like that, so that uh, we get more followers on Instagram. 
Well, that's not actually what's happening. If you imagine um, that we had a, uh, a nunchaku and we were swinging the nunchaku, it would need to wrap around our body before we can fling it back, right? So, so we get some kind of wrap. And in many um, FMA systems, they use sticks in a similar way because as we strike, we bring it back into chamber in order to be able to return um, the strike with power. What, what happens with a pick pick, as far as I can see in my experience, and again, this is my interpretation, is as we tap it here, um, it, can, it is causing the wrap right in front of us and we can immediately return the weapon. So instead of waiting for it to come all the way back here, which you know might be microseconds difference, um, we're getting the tap here and it's immediately returning. So we get a much faster um, recovery in terms of the uh, post, post strike than we would if we let the stick come all the way back. This is one of those things that is a key signature of Decampo. And in the picture I'm going to construct here, you'll see adds to this idea of a fast um, recovery or a fast counter-strike on the opponent. Another idea, which is a key feature of Decampo, um, and you see it in other uh, civil one systems too, but it's uh, Decampo is certainly the only system that I've uh, ever encountered um, where this was directly um, articulated. And it's a, an idea we call Hayong Kulub. Um, Hayong uh, means to be supine, to be face up. Um, and so uh, this is when our wrist is in a face up position. Um, we'll notice that one of the, one of the key features of DeCampo uh, 123 original is that the tip of the stick, when we're in a guard position, uh, the low guard positions, is usually pointing to the ground. We have another position we call Kulub, um, and Kulub uh, means to be prone, so in other words, face down. And so here um, we have the Kulub position, right, where, where our palm is now facing to the ground. Um, some people's palm may face a little bit more inwards, uh, but ultimately the idea is that the palm is facing the ground. And again, the, the tip of the stick, um, unlike other systems where uh, you know the stick might be in various elevated positions, one of the key features of Decampo is the stick is pointing to the ground. I'm going to argue that I think the main reason for the, this uh, pointing to the ground is that it actually relaxes the shoulder. Um, it's a li little bit like you know Marvin Hagler's boxing, where um, the front arm would be down and and the uh, shoulder relaxed um, and allowing therefore a faster kind of, again, a faster uh, counter-strike movement because you're not having to relax your tension before you, you throw back the movement. Of course, you can do that in other ways where the, you know, the stick is, is resting in various places um, and systems have their own way of doing that. Um, so this is the high on position, the Kulub position. Now it's easy to kind of get confused here and to think that Hayong is actually um, a kind of synonym for abierta or the open guard position and that Kulub is a synonym for Sarada or the closed guard position. But actually um, you could be, for example, uh, Kulub in Sarada. You could, in theory, be in Hayong in Sarada. You could be um, Kulub in abierta or you could be Hayong in Abiyota. And in fact, when you first start out, you see many people when they strike, um, particularly if they've got other FMA experience, um, they will tend to strike and finish here um, in Kulub. And one of the uh, kind of key features of, if you like, of the aesthetics of Decampo is that as we strike here, we flick the wrist out. Um, and this is kind of, a, again, a signature kind of move. But this signature is there for all sorts of reasons. One, as uh, our Maestro Paolo will talk about, is that you, you don't arrest the power of the strike. So you let the, um, the strike go through its full range of motion and going into Hayong assists that. The other thing is, as Paolo has pointed out previously, is that when I'm in this position, I can, I'm already in a position to return the counter-strike. Um, so it is the equivalent uh, that happens in other systems where we place our uh, weapon in guard at the end. When you combine that with uh, what I've uh, already talked about in terms of pick-pick, um, where we're slapping here to, um, to you know, bring back the motion, the fact is that, that uh, our strike here is in Hayong, and as we slap here and arrest the motion and it goes into Kulub, we're now in a position to immediately return the strike. So, uh, and again, as we return the strike, it'll flick out into Hayong. So it's immediately ready to come back in the other direction. So we have this kind of fast um, recovery that's facilitated both by pick pick um, and simultaneously by the Hayong Kulub motion. 
Now there's a drill in De Campo called Hagged Hubud. Um, which is a kind of uh, counter-offensive drill where we strike the incoming weapon hand, um, we uh, hit again a second time, and then we uh, strike a third time. And we can go back the other way. We can meet it, we can uh, hit a second time, and then strike a third time. And uh, Maestro Palo has recently put up an excellent video on um, how this applies to the use of blade work. Um, and he sees it as a central kind of principle that uh, make sense when you're using a blade. Um, I want to suggest here that uh, in terms of the stick work that Hayung and Kulub has for me a particular um, kind of power which is again that instead of having to bring the stick all the way back here to get my next strike um, all I have to do having struck my opponent is shift my wrist position from Hai, in this case from Hayung to Kulub and then back into Hayung to get the strike. Or if I'm coming back the other way, again, I've hit in Kulub, and as I've hit in Kulub, I can immediately turn the wrist into, into Hayung, and my weapon is now chambered, but in front of myself, and then hit in Kulub. And when it finishes, it then finishes in Hayung. So actually what looks like kind of three motions, one, two, three, is in fact four motions. So we go Hayung, Kulub, Hayung, Kulub. We're going Kulub, Hayung, Kulub, Hayung. So there's always four kind of uh, movements which are oscillations between Hayong and Kulub. And in a way, um, that wrist uh, changing becomes the last piece in a kinetic chain that's coming from the footwork and body motion um, and out through the kind of uh, whole body shoulder motion but then through the exchange uh, of the wrist to help generate power um, in the movement. So there's a kind of whip effect through Hayong and Kulub as well. Um, we can also think about it uh, from a strategy that's often used in Japanese sword work where we point the weapon directly at the person's eyes and one of the things that happens when you do that is it's a tendency for the person to tilt their body back um, to get their head out the way and as they do that they become vulnerable for that final counter strike so if you imagine um, they're striking at me I've, I've uh, gone for their hand and then hit their hand and then immediately I, I thrust my weapon towards their face right so I've got like a, a strike towards their face this tilts their head back and it and puts them slightly off balance ready for my final counter strike One of the things that's happening with Hayong Kulub, um, in my, my kind of experience of playing with this, is that instead of the strike having to come all the way back here to chamber, or all the way back here to chamber, um, we've got a situation where I'm able to generate the force in front of myself without bringing the stick all the way back. Now that's not... So if we look at um, that in relation to a target, You can hear, you can get um, lots of power without having to bring the stick back um, just by changing that wrist position. Another aspect of De Campo which um, de shows its focus on uh, the speed of recovery of the strikes, so that you get more strikes in in the same amount of time, um, is the use of the bounce. So one of the basic techniques um, at the, the first level of DeCampo, um, at the uh, primary level, is a, a technique called horizontal, group three horizontal. And we strike, let the stick bounce, and then strike through. Strike, bounce, through. If I show it this way. So one of the things that's happening with uh, this kind of motion is again, I'm getting a first hit and like it's a half, half strike that bounces and then a full strike through. Half strike bounce, full strike through. Um, and again, these motions, which we also see in uh, group four, Serrata, where we uh, come upwards and bounce and then return a redondo. Or group five, Abierta, 
where we uh, achieve the same thing. So we hit upwards and then redondo back. So the stick is actually bouncing into the recovery um, and actually helps us initiate the counter strike. So the bouncing is another way in which Decampo generates um, a, a, like an immediate counter striking capability that doesn't require you to bring the stick all the way back to get the next strike. But actually, you can stay fairly close to the target um, and you get this kind of vibrational effect in terms of um, the double hit. So the last um, basic element of Decampo that really shows this kind of idea of fast counter striking can be seen as fundamental techniques, particularly um, if we look again at uh, group four, Serrata, which is basically a half strike followed by a redondo, or um, group five, Abierta, again, half strikes followed by redondo on the other side, um, or uh, De Campo uh, Original, um, which is uh, group six. So we go from the Serrata side to the Abierta side. So we have this action. Now this is a signature technique in De Campo. It's a, again, very core element of the system. And one of the things that we can see um, in this, which aids the speed of counter-striking, is a kind of logic about where the opponent's going to move um, it, when I initiate my initial strike. So I can attack him with this uh, low line strike, and if he brings his, if he's a blocker who brings his weapon down, um, then he may get a, a stop on my strike. Right? He may be able to prevent me from hitting him. If he doesn't, I, you know, and I strike him, that's great. I then initiate my counter strike and my finishing strike. Um, if, on the other hand, he does actually get a block on me, or he's someone who goes to block, um, this movement means immediately I wrap on top of his hand. Um, so he's come to kind of defend himself, and now his wrist is exposed, and as his wrist is exposed, I, I, I'm already in a position to do the counter. So we get a motion like, boom. In one, one hit, um, two strikes become one. So instead of just uh, hitting and then hitting again, we initiate this, and then whip it into um, the redondo strike. So he actually gets hit twice, um, once upwards and once downwards. Or if he blocks my uh, upward strike, he gets hit with the downward. And then I'm in a position, having struck his hand, to go for my finishing strike. And, and that goes for the um, Abierta side as well. Same, same, same concept. So, uh, and, and of course, in our uh, curriculum, we start to mix that at different, uh, with different angles. Um, and you learn that you can put that into the horizontal as well as the vertical, etc. So the ideas that I've presented in this uh, video are really my own notebook um, of experiences uh, that I've had playing around with DeCampo over the last two years and really uh, trying to understand um, how to apply the movements. Um, ideas I've also got from our maestro, Paolo Pugling, and from watching our, our master, Jomelin, um, the, the heir to the system. And trying to understand uh, how one might take the, the vocabulary um, of the art and apply it in different ways. And as I mentioned in this video, one of the key ideas that runs through all of the things that I've demonstrated is the speed of recovery of the strike. So that in fact, we can achieve what the founder uh, set out to do in the name of the art, um, that uh, when we talk about DeCampo one, two, three, 
um, that three strikes can become one. In other words, we can get uh, three strikes happening in the time that um, often it, it takes a person to do one strike by some of these methods that he's incorporated into the system. Now, that's my interpretation. Um, I'm not saying that's the gospel truth um, or uh, is something that's uh, written in stone in the curriculum. Um, it's certainly also just where I'm at in my own thinking in terms of exploring De Campo. Um, if you want to know more, uh, I strongly suggest that you uh, enrol in the online course um, there's plenty of support. Okay, we, uh, we do what? group sessions twice a week um, with uh, an international crew from all over the world where we practice the curriculum, cool. uh, which itself is a kind of routine initially. And, uh, and it's uh, great Three. both making those connections, but also um, a good motivator Whoa. to keep practicing. And you'll learn lots. Um, Palo is a wealth of information. Um, so I recommend um, that you take a look at the online curriculum. If you happen to be in Newcastle, Australia, um, look us up. Uh, we're Carly Newcastle, and um, we'd certainly uh, be happy to have you come along to training. So thanks for listening. Salamat. And uh, hope to see you sometime training to Campo.